Hello gorgeous people, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going over the newer analog horror series, Somnium Dream Viewer. In this series, a company releases a device that helps record your dreams. Now this does seem like an awesome idea until you find out the side effects that this device is having on the public. Some of these side effects being permanent nightmares and your nightmares maybe even coming to life? As always guys, please be sure to go and support the original channel that created the series, Somnium Dream Viewer. The link to their channel will be at the top of the description down below. Please be sure to go and support your analog horror content creators. All right guys, we got a long one here today, so enough of me talking, let's hop right in. Cassette one, overview. Presented by Somnium Micro Technologies. Somnium Dream Viewer, product overview and user guide. Congratulations on your purchase of a Somnium Dream Viewer from Somnium Micro Technologies. You're about to embark on a journey of discovery into the most mysterious realm of all, the world of your dreams. What is Somnium Dream Viewer? Somnium Dream Viewer from Somnium Microtechnology scans your brain as you sleep, reading and storing data from the visual cortex. So, it records dreams basically? Electrode Array Control Unit. I feel like that wouldn't be comfortable while sleeping. How does it work? Step 1. The user goes to sleep and has a dream. Okay. Gonna have to go back for that. The Dream Viewer records dream images from the user's visual cortex. In the morning, the captured dream images are ready to print. S oh, so it prints them out? Example of a dream imaged by Dream Viewer. Charles Crawford, 32. Dream recorded October 8th, 1982. The music got really sinister. All right, imaging questions and answers. Why do my dream viewer photos seem blurry or smeared? Deeper sleep results in clearer dream imagery. If your REM cycles are unstable, your dream viewer images may be affected. Try using supplements or changing your sleeping habits in order to get better night's sleep. See pamphlet ABCs of Z's, getting your best sleep. Why do my dream viewer photos lack color? Color spectra reproduction from the visual cortex impulses is often not exact. Make sure you're wearing your dream viewer securely throughout your sleep in order to maintain clear neural impulse readings. Why do I experience the nightmares? Some unpleasant dreams are normal. When experiencing a nightmare, it is important to keep in mind that the things you witnessed are not real. It's all in your head. If you experience an increase in your frequency of nightmares, stop using the dream viewer. If the nightmares do not stop after you cease using the dream viewer, call 1-800- to speak to a licensed dream physician about dream suppressants. Make sure to call immediately. Um, now do I call this number? You have dialed a non-working 800 number. Check the number and redial. Thank you. This has been a presentation by Somnium Microtechnologies. Please see supplementary cassettes for additional info. Okay, so we do have to go back because there were quite a few things that we need to go over there. For one here, when they're teaching us about the dream viewer, there is a second where, okay. 
Step one, the user goes to sleep and has a nightmare. And then we see this eye in the brain with what looks like a mini moon, unless that's just a symbol adding to the eye. But interesting, so maybe they want you to have a nightmare when you put on the dream viewer. And then at the end here, when it says, why do I experience nightmares? We are trapped with you in your mind, waiting for you to return. Again, this is only video one, so we're not going to know much about like what's actually going on. <laughs> I can't really dissect this too much, but we do know that this is going on around 1982 because that's when this dream was recorded. We also learn about somebody who used the dream viewer and we learn about their dream that was recorded and whatnot. And it seemed like they had a dream where they were in their town and everything was exactly the same. Just there were no people and no buildings. He realized where he was though still and tried to go find his house. His house was the only building that was still there. But right before he gets to his house, he sees someone in front of it standing in the street. And it seems to be this thing. And it says his body's made out of dark blue pieces of newspaper or scraps of canvas arranged in a patchwork. He reached out to me and I woke up. I think it's definitely interesting to note that when he reaches out, that's when Charles wakes up. I think there's definitely something with that. Again, this is only the first video. We're not going to know too much, but we know that this company developed a device that takes pictures of your dreams, which is actually pretty sick and something that I would like in real life. Although this is definitely going to have a sinister twist to it. So mm, obviously that would be horrible if you had a nightmare and it got pictures of it. That's probably something you don't want to think about again. Let's jump into the next video and see what happens. Cassette 2. Legal Action. Attention, Attention. Somnium. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with sleep paralysis, night terrors, waking dream hallucinations, permanent nightmare syndrome, or any nightmare-related disorder, in conjunction with use of the Somnium Dream Viewer or other Somnium Microtechnologies products, you may be entitled to financial compensation. The rise of nightmare-related disorders in this country in recent years has only Whoa. worsened. Use of brain-affecting devices produced by Somnium Microtechnologies may have put you at risk of dreams resulting in fear, despair, anxiety, and panic. In rarer cases, use of these devices may also result in more serious symptoms. Don't delay. Call the number on your screen now for a free legal consultation and information packet. We know your dreams are important to you. This corruption of minds will not go unpunished. For those currently affected by these nightmares, we urge you to seek help in the form of dream suppressant medication immediately. Mm. Easy dose, relief from your worst nightmares. So it seems that some new dream viewer ended up being a really bad idea because so many people were getting nightmares that it started to affect their real life. I can only imagine that if you had nightmares every night, that would definitely affect how you are when you're awake. Obviously your fears would be like insane. Like lost dogs. Whoa. Okay, hold up. Okay, so adult easy dose, maximum strength dream suppressant, controls the nightmares up to 48 hours, formulated for adults ages 12 and over. Relief from your worst nightmares. Is this made by the same company that did the dream viewer technology though? And then we get this here. Like lost dogs, they followed us home. Now the house is theirs and wound opened that will never be healed. So it sounds like maybe something in the nightmares is now just embedded inside people's heads and giving them these constant fears. I'm just making this up as we go again. Like we're only second video in. <laughs> so there's a lot more to uh, look at here. But again, the Somnium Dream Viewer uh, gave people sleep paralysis, night terrors, waking dream hallucinations, permanent nightmare syndrome, and other nightmare related disorders. Permanent nightmare syndrome? Is that a real thing? So nightmare syndrome is a pattern of repeated frightening and vivid dreams that affects your quality of life. It ranges from mild to severe and can be short term or chronic. Nightmare disorder is treatable with various psychotherapies and medications. So it's just constant nightmares. And permanent nightmare syndrome is insane. That means every time you go to sleep, you're having a nightmare. Um, there is a phone number here. I am going to call it to see if anything's there. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. Thank you for calling the Medical Alert Center. This I called the phone number. The phone number does not relate to the series. It is a real phone number. But all right, on to the next one. 
Cassette 3. Dream Locations. Interpreting Your Dreams, Volume 1, Locations. Presented by Somnia Microtechnologies. Interpreting Your Dreams. For as long as man has dreamt, he has asked himself, how do your dreams relate to waking life? What can be learned from them? With this series, we'll introduce you to a dream interpretation method developed by your mom. I don't know, because it moves too fast. Developed by Somnium researchers. Locations play a major role in dream interpretation. Frequently, dreams contain locations from our everyday life, but just as often, we see landscapes born of pure fantasy. Part 1. Common real-world locations. Home. In all likelihood, you spend most of your time at home, so it's no wonder you dream about it too. Current and past domiciles are an extremely common location for dreams, often with parts of them transported into strange locales. See, I read that one really fast, and it still went by. Although the geometry may change, your home is always your home. The sky. Dreams of flight are a longtime favorite of many dreamers. If you experience them, pay attention to how you are flying and how much control you have over your motion. This is often linked to our personal confidence in achieving our goals, but above all, have fun. Work. Stress and dissatisfaction in the workplace can lead to an increased frequency of work-related dreams. Often we think about problems from our 9 to 5 as we slip into dreams. Their problems can cross over it or manifest in different ways. Just remember, in a dream, you can always quit. True. If you're upset about your job, just quit it in the dream. Oh. Wait, whoa, 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 wait, hey, wait, 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 wait. Something did change there. Just remember, in a dream, you're here forever. Hmm. The labyrinth. Feelings of guilt or doubt may lead you to the labyrinth. See the others trapped with you, marching towards the infinite center, running from their past towards an uncertain future. The labyrinth traps us all. You've been here before, and you will be here again. I don't know about y'all, I never had the dream in the labyrinth before. There was a glitch there. You were always here. Comforting others on the path is discouraged. The labyrinth exists within us all. Forgetting is acquired comfort. You will be watched. There's too much going on. You were always here. And we're back to we're back to talking about stuff. Places that you visit in your dreams, like nothing just happened. Okay, Somnia Microtechnologies, I think whoever's making these tapes, you need to have a talk with them. 76% of survey respondents reported that dreams of their being in school, even years and decades after graduating. As high school is a formative time, stress and emotions from that experience often imprint themselves on the deepest parts of the psyche. Don't worry though, those tests you didn't study for aren't real. Thank you for coming on this journey of dream interpretation with us. Stay tuned for more resources to guide you on your journey of introspection and self-actualization. All right, let's go back and uh, analyze some stuff here real quick. So when we were here, I said there was a glitch and it seems that the labyrinth title changes to the black iron prison. Now let's read some of that text that flashed on the bottom real quick. You were always here. Comforting others on the path is discouraged. The labyrinth exists within us all. Forgetting is a quiet comfort. You will be watched from above always. Then you get this picture of like this monstrous thing here. I don't even know what that is. Time is a solid mass of iron. Your house is the center point. Place your palms to the cold metal. Sickness is your way of life. Rot in a dream of awakening. Cast your hot flesh into teeth of cold iron. You were always here. So in these videos, something that I've noticed that's constantly reoccurring is home and your house. Like they say your house is the center just now. One of the places that you dream of the most is your home. It followed you home. Even in the first video, Charles has a dream and his goal is to find his house. Whatever is going on here, maybe your house is like the way to escape because that's what you're most familiar with. So that would 
be what brings you back to reality the most. But it's interesting here that they're kind of talking about the concept of a nightmare prison, like somewhere that you can't get out of, somewhere that you're lost in, a maze, a labyrinth. And maybe at some point, if you discover this labyrinth, you can't wake up until you find your way home. Again, these are just my thoughts so far, but we are learning more and more. Cassette 4. Hallucinations. Oh, I don't like that. Mommy. Mommy. Good morning, baby. I hate Mommy, how dark this is. I had a bad dream last night. Oh, baby. Daddy's still asleep. The Midnight Movie will return after these messages. I don't like how Daddy looked there. Daddy looks weird as a giant eye. Does someone you love have waking dream hallucinations? Real sufferers of waking dream hallucinations. I drive to work and follows me. When I look up at it, I can feel its claws sink into my chest and devour me. I try not to look at it anymore, but I know it's there. I can hear its wings beaten even over the engine of my car. I can feel it staring at me through my apartment walls. I see it every day somewhere in the corner of my eye. At the store, I'll see it slither past the end of the aisle as I turn the corner. In the car, I'll see it in the rearview mirror, curled around my headrest. At home, I'll hear its scaly belly dragging along my roof just feet above my bed. My husband tries to get me to open the front door sometimes. He'll be home from work, bringing back groceries, or trying to see the kids again. He'll scream, cry, plead, even fly into a rage when I don't answer him for hours. I don't look through the peephole anymore. I know it's not him. I buried him last year. Whoa. Do these stories sound familiar? If you or a loved one suffers from waking dream hallucinations, there is help. Special medical facilities for those suffering from waking dream hallucinations are available at no cost in many major American cities. These facilities can help prevent the spread of the disease and the suffering that it brings. Remember, the entities that you see are not real. They cannot hurt you as long as you don't believe in them. We urge you to refer anyone you suspect of being afflicted by these hallucinations to this number. Call now for a free consultation. There's no obligation, and we can provide transport and other accommodations to help us manage this condition. Don't show fear. Get help today. There's still a lot of time left. Don't open the door, don't open the door. Okay, so just to be clear, um, that footage at the end was from Carol, who talked about her husband, you know, was constantly knocking on the door. I think it's safe to assume that these waking dream hallucinations are caused by the Somnium Dream Viewer. These are more side effects from it. There's a few problems here. One, that it seems like people's nightmares are now following them into the world while they're awake. They're saying that they see them while they're just out and about in their daily life, whether it's out of the corner of their eye or they actually hear it above them. It's 
it seems like it's all in their head and it seems like it's something that they just see and that's terrifying enough as it is until the end there when carol actually approaches the door when she's recording this one you could see it on the recording which kind of shows that this may not be just in their heads but what definitely confirms it is you hear the glass break on her front door at the end of the video there showing that these nightmares might be real now and are actual physical entities in our world and that is crazy that is definitely a problem if your nightmares can come to life especially if it's these creatures like you know they all these people in this video describe these creatures like scaly stomachs and claws and wings and flying all this craziness my confusion is though it some of them say that they like see it in stores and stuff where they see it while they're out can no one else see it? Can only they see it? But then how is it also appearing on camera and physically breaking things? That's the bit of the confusing part. Who knows? But this definitely adds another layer of the side effects of the dream viewer. At least this is what I'm understanding is uh, a part of the dream viewer. Um, it does look like we have some new groups or some new organizations here. We have the Free Dreamers Syndicate, FDS Support Group Network by FADB, which is Federal Ad Board. So that's interesting. Maybe these people are against the Somnium Dream Viewer, you know, Somnium Micro Technologies. But I really like that footage that we got at the end there. That was actually really cool and really nice. I enjoyed that. Uh, let's jump into the next one. We still got quite a lot of videos left. Cassette 5. Evidence Tape. All right, I'm pausing instantly to read all this. Warning, this tape is FBMI property. The following recording is classified material related to an ongoing or historical case investigated by the Federal Bureau of Metaphysical Intelligence. Okay, so metaphysics is the branch of philosophy that studies the fundamental nature of reality. If you're not authorized to view this material, destroy this tape immediately. Federal law provides severe criminal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're going to be punished. You might die in jail, blah, 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 blah. Interesting that there's a Federal Bureau of Metaphysical Intelligence is that how bad this has gotten? That they've made a federal bureau for it? That's okay. <laughs> it's a little crazy. FBMI Evidence Archive. Okay. September 28th, 1986, I think that said. I'm writing this down because there are only two options left as I see it. Either I'm going crazy and need to be committed immediately or the things that I'm seeing are real. And I'm not sure what happens then. I'm not sure who to turn to or if anyone will believe me, but this feels real. I'm afraid, but I know what's real. And I need to know that someone else will know what's going on, no matter what happens to me. I'll start at the beginning. I've always been somewhat of a recluse, not out of misanthropy. I just prefer my own company. I manage to get by doing freelance programming work that pays the bills, but it also allows me a great deal of freedom with my schedule. I've always been a night owl, so naturally I gravitated to a nocturnal schedule and one where I never needed to worry about when I slept or woke up. This guy sounds like Once me. I was free from the tyranny of alarm clocks, I became interested in exploring my dreams. I always had vivid dreams quite frequently, and I was trying to master lucid dreaming, so when I first heard of the Dream Viewer device, I ordered one immediately. Bad idea, bro. I've always been interested in electronic gadgets. I'm sure you could probably tell that by the fact that I'm recording this on a note recorder and not just writing it down on paper, but among all the technology I'd seen in my life, the Dream Viewer was something completely different. When it arrived in the mail, I immediately opened it. I watched the instructional tapes, and I began using it that very same day. Of course, it worked exactly as advertised but I began to notice something strange happening over time. As soon as I started using the Dream Viewer, all my dreams had a strange undercurrent. It wasn't something I could put my finger on at first, but the inhabitants of the dream worlds that I visited all seemed to get more and more reclusive, paranoid, and despondent as time went on. I also found it impossible to lose a dream. Somehow I'd, I'd always forget to reality check myself despite being so diligent about it in the past. For those that may not know, lucid dreaming is when you're dreaming and you become aware of your dreaming. When you're dreaming and you become aware of it, you can basically control your dreams and almost imagine whatever you want to happen in your dream. I only know so much about this because 
similar to this guy here, I did attempt at one time in my life to try to lucid dream and to try to like master it and whatnot. A way to reality check yourself in a dream would be constantly checking your watch. If you make it a habit in real life to constantly check your watch, you're more often to attempt to check your watch while you're dreaming. And if you were to check your watch while you're dreaming, technology usually doesn't work in dreams. So whatever time it says on your watch would not make sense or there would be no time at all. And that would confuse you and then make you be like, oh, I'm dreaming. And then now that you're in your dream and you're aware of it, you can now lucid dream. I hope that made sense. I think that's like the simplest way to explain it. But this guy is saying that could not reality check himself and would forget to reality check himself despite being trained on doing it. At first, these symptoms were very mild and ignorable, so I kept using the device without thinking much of it. However, that changed the day I had one particular dream. The first thing I remember was that I was in a massive cave of blue ice. Winds howled around me and I could feel the cold gusts against my face. I wasn't alone though. This older man and I were journeying further into this cave, and soon we came across an old house frozen in the ice. We worked to free the door from the ice and opened it. Once inside, we broke apart some wooden furniture and made a fire. I asked the man, why are we here? And the first words that I had spoken to him, he said, I cannot escape from here, but you can, if you can break your fate. Then he raised one gnarled finger up and pointed out the warped glass of the window. I stood and peered through the glass. Outside, I saw a shadowy door standing on the other side of the cave. At first, I couldn't make out a single feature, just a black rectangular shape. But as I stared, I could pick out more and more details in its presence. It shook me to my core. Its frame consumed my entire vision. It was something that somehow I knew was there before, but I had never truly seen. Its perspective was off, its corners bent the wrong way. Something about it was just wrong. When I woke up, I could remember the details of my dream as well as any, but when I tried to remember even a single detail of that door, it slipped from my mind like trying to grasp flowing water in my hands. I could feel that there was once detail in that form, but now it was completely missing from my mind. After that, my dreams always ended the same way. I would go through this world for some time. Not always in the ice caves, of course. It could be in a forest or a city. It didn't matter. But then, at some point, I would look at a faraway wall or into a corner of a room, and I would see that door. Well, once I saw it, I would just stop and stare, and it would slowly fill my vision in my mind until I woke up. It didn't matter if I used the dream viewer or not. I would only have these dreams, and I would always see the door. Despite seeing it every time, I could never remember it other than just as a dark and formless mass of wood. It was like there was a door casting a shadow, but the shadow was all I could ever remember of it. I feared seeing it. I feared even thinking about it. It became all-consuming. I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. It felt so silly to be afraid of something so mundane, so ubiquitous. I couldn't just tell people about something I could barely explain to myself. Another night, maybe two weeks later, I had another dream. I was in a car, being driven through a dense city that was crawling with soldiers. The car was driven by someone I knew, and I was hiding in the back seat because this occupying military force was hunting me. Eventually, we made our way down a twisting alleyway. We exited the car, and we went up some stairs to a small apartment in a large, grimy building. The guy who had driven me there and I sat at a table across from an older woman in a small room with a high ceiling, lit by yellow sconces that glowed with a sick electricity. She spoke to us in hushed tones of a group called the Children of Minos, who had taken control of the city. We were part of some sort of resistance, and for a moment I remembered hearing these names before these phrases, and some forgotten memory returned to me. But just as this happened, we heard a pounding at the door downstairs and a splintering of wood. They told me to get to the roof and hide myself, and pointed me out the fire escape as they rushed out the other door. I ran out and grabbed the rough metal rungs of the ladder in my hands, flying up the rickety framework as the sounds of violence grew louder behind me. I pulled myself up on the last balcony, onto the roof. There, waiting for me at the far end of the roof, was the black door. Oh, shit. This time, though, I didn't immediately freeze upon seeing it. I took some tentative steps towards it, and then as I heard shouting and the clanking of boots climbing rungs, I moved faster. 
I reached the threshold and the presence of the door blocked out all other sensation from my mind. I could barely hear the soldiers scream at me and ready their guns over the ringing and thrumming in my ears. It pulled me closer to grasp the handle and the cold metal pierced my mind. I turned the knob and the rotation echoed through my body and made my stomach do somersaults. I pushed forward and fell into the thick, inky abyss. I must have fallen for days. At least, it felt like days. It very well could have been weeks. I felt the barrier between my body and the darkness become unstitched, like a thread being pulled along my skin that let my soul spill out. My senses became detached and foreign to each other. I could see texture and undulation in the void, hear far-off echoes and feel the wind blow through what was left of my physical form, but all of these sensations felt like they were happening separately, like my body and mind were being stretched like taffy across a tapestry of chaos. I existed in this state, being fundamentally broken but still conscious like grains of sand being blown through a pitch-black sandstorm. After a time, it, it all just sort of ended. I fell back into my body with the force of a truck hitting a brick wall. I screamed, forcing air out of unfamiliar lungs in a primal expression of terror. I choked and screamed, my muscles firing from the base's instinct, propelled me out of bed and onto the floor where I thrashed for a few moments before remembering where I was, who I was. Once my eyes adjusted to the light and I could recall how to move my body, I checked my computer's calendar. It had only been seven or eight hours since I had fallen asleep. Everything was just as I had left it. That was last week. Since then, I haven't been sleeping. I don't want to go back there. The caffeine pills are keeping me going fine enough, but my headache is getting worse and worse. I can barely concentrate, and as I look over at my bed, part of me is begging to slip under the sheets and rest, but I just can't do it. I know I can't keep this up much longer, but three days ago, I saw it in the corner of my eye in my living room. When I tried to look directly at it, it disappeared just as quickly, but since then, it's been showing up more and more, and now it doesn't go away when I look at it. Mm. I can see it now. Far wall of my bedroom. It's like a monolith carved out of pitch black sky. I can see the frame now and the handle. I don't know what's going to happen. I think this is the only way to end this. I have to go through again. I have to go through. Oh my god, you could hear him opening the door. Is that it? Closing notes. Cole Sharp was reported missing on September 21st, 1986. This tape in the supplementary material was recovered from his apartment by Oakland Police Department officers, who then transferred custody to the FBMI. Sharp currently remains missing. Holy sh- That was fantastic storytelling. Oh my god. That was so good. It was literally nothing but text on the screen and a couple of images. But oh my god, is there a lot to go over there. Here is my theory so far of what's going on. The older man that he first speaks to, I think is a victim of this whole scenario that Cole just went through. I think the older man is someone that also went through the dark door and ended up falling victim to everything that's going on here. And maybe now he's trapped in these dreams forever. When he tells Cole, you could change your fate and points at the door. I don't think he was saying go through the door. I think he meant like change your fate by avoiding the door. At least that's my theory because the door is obviously bad. It's not good. I mean, given that Cole is now missing. Here's the really interesting part. The resistance group uh, is called the Children of Minos. So I have no idea who or what Minos is. So I looked it up and in Greek mythology, Minos was the king of, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce all these words. So please, I know you're going to make fun of me in the comments. Go for it. But I'm just, I'm letting you know that I'm aware. In Greek mythology, Minos was a king of Crete son of Zeus and Europa. Every nine years, he made King Aegis pick seven young boys and seven young girls to be sent to Daedalus's creation. Now that sounds, what the hell are we even talking about? Until you realize that Daedalus's creation is also called the Labyrinth. Yes, the Labyrinth, which we found out was a location that you could dream of a few videos ago. And in the Labyrinth, 
you are to be eaten by the Minotaur. After his death, Minos becomes a judge of the dead in the underworld. So it seems now we have a sort of historical tie-in here. There's a tie-in to Greek mythology somehow. Is Cole maybe one of these seven young boys that gets chosen to enter the labyrinth? Is that where this dark door leads you to is the labyrinth? And that's why he never came out again. Maybe he got eaten by whatever is the Minotaur in this dream realm. Who knows? There has to be a tie in there. There's no way that the children of Minos is a coincidence with the labyrinth. We're only five videos in and I, we really do have a lot of information. I'm loving this a lot so far. So we do have an interlude here. It's not a part of the main series playlist, but I thought we'd check it out anyway. It's only 57 seconds. Let's see what it is. Cassette six. Interlude. All right, so this instantly looks like the labyrinth. I can only guess this is where Cole might be now. For all we know, this could be Cole's perspective. Yeah. This is definitely the labyrinth. You can tell it just looks like a maze. Oh, dude, this is ridiculously ho Oh. Oh, come on. Shout out to the comments. Uh, shout out to Hi Hixi? H I X X Y 2277. Cipher at the end is Atbosh. It reads Somnia Microtechnologies, Robert Fowler, Samantha Ingram, Afonsia Vlasova, Mariella Estrada. Okay, so these all seem to be names that may be important moving forward. I wrote all those names down. Hopefully, they will mean something. On to the next one. Cassette 7. Orientation. Somnia Microtechnologies, baby. Let's get it. Presentation. Chapter one, who is Somnium? All right, so we're gonna learn more about the company here. A third of our lives are spent sleeping and we rarely remember our dreams long after we wake. Some say that our dreams hold the secrets to living our best lives. One revolutionary company is looking to take us there and beyond. Somnium Microtechnologies, employee orientation. As we explore the new world of the 1980s, technological possibilities are opening themselves to us everywhere in the fields of transportation, automation, computers, and more. But as we enhance the world around us, we must also look within ourselves. The world of our dreams, so often overlooked in our hectic modern era, is waiting to be explored. Just as we reached for the moon, we can reach a higher understanding of ourselves through analysis of our brain's greatest mystery, our dreams. Now the biggest name in dream research is becoming the hottest name in consumer electronics. Somnium Microtechnologies, incorporated in 1981, is poised to take the world by storm. But who is behind these amazing advances? The brains behind Somnium Microtechnologies are the neuroscience whiz kids of Five Labs. Five Labs was founded in 1975, named for its four founders. These four individuals started Five Labs to pursue their dreams. Mm. These are actually all the names that we just saw in the interlude, except for this one. Weird that they say the original four researchers and they're talking about four people, but there is a fifth here. Studying dreams. With government funding from the FBMI, Five Labs was able to make significant breakthroughs in dream imaging. Hold up. The FBMI already existed before them? And they funded them? Interesting. As soon as the first images of dreams were developed, these scientists knew that this technology was meant to be shared with the world. And thus, the Somnium Microtechnologies Company was born. 
Somnium's flagship consumer product, the Dream Viewer, is still in early stages of development. That's why we need your expertise, determination, and skill to make this dream a reality. Chapter 2, Working at Somnium. At Somnium, we put our employees first. That means things like health insurance, retirement plans, paid time off, and daily psychological evaluations are part of your standard employee benefits package. Above all else, Somnium embraces a culture of safety. We care about your well-being and want to make sure that your workplace is a welcoming and safe one. That's why, no matter your job description, whenever you're at the Somnium Research Campus, we ask that you always follow the four principles of safety. Always oh, keep the lights on. Okay. The research campus closes at 9 p.m. That means all employees must be out of the building by 9.30. No exceptions. If you need to stay behind for any reason, you must alert your supervisor and FSO. Stay with a buddy. Don't wander around the office alone. If you need to access something in an unoccupied part of the office, bring a coworker along. If you're asked to accompany a coworker, make it a priority. Safety is number one. Report everything to your FSO. If you see anything strange, immediately contact your floor safety officer. No matter how benign it seems, your FSO will let you know whether evacuation is necessary. Don't show fear. Hold up. Now, obviously, I'm sorry. If anybody's watching this orientation video and is like, oh yeah, I still want to work here, you're out of your mind. That was the most insane red flags I've ever seen in my life. Something that should always be important and is sadly lacked in modern day is safety in the workplace. The, none of this is safe. You need to always keep the lights on and it's like so strict what time you leave the office is kind of odd and the fact that you need to always be with a buddy and never by yourself is even weirder what could happen to you at a workplace that you would not constantly need to be with somebody and they're also like if you see anything weird or suspicious make sure you report it There's so many red flags and then do not show fear why what happens if i look scared of something what am i gonna see that might make me show fear all right evaluation on your worksheet, select the image in each set that does not belong. Set one. Crab. Ooh. You look a bit weirder. Snake. Crab again. All right, so it'd be the snake, I guess. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's definitely the the bird in the first. Set three. Okay. What is that in the background? Okay, it's that one for sure. Congratulations, the assessment is complete. Please submit your worksheet to your proctor. Thank you for watching. Your adventure working at Somnium Microtechnologies begins today. Your supervisor will now direct you to your next training activity. Uh, so from that video, we got to learn kind of how Somnium Technologies began and that it started from a company called Five Labs uh, with their four researchers. Clearly, they're trying to write someone out of history here who we still don't know. But the four names that we saw were the four names that we saw in the interlude. So clearly, they have to be important. And we learn about how Somnium Technologies kind of is just very sketchy, even from their orientation videos. And then what the hell this even is here? I have no idea. This looks like some some nightmare fuel, literally. Maybe something that was seen in a nightmare. But all right, uh, let's jump into the next one. We got four videos left. Cassette 8, Neznavka.
I just want to let you guys know that the audio in the next two cassettes was actually copyrighted, so these might be edited a little weird. It does go back to normal later, but if you do want to see the original videos with the original music, the link is always in the description. New Fairbolt Historical Society. In 1876, architect Jean-Pierre Albosset was commissioned to design a prison to be built on the coast near the city of New Fairbolt. As he did for many such projects, Albosset traveled to the site to survey the land and spent the night camping under the stars to connect himself to the site. It is said that that night he had a dream of sprawling, spiraling corridors of waves crashing at the feet of half-submerged statues intertwined rooms of iron and stone. When he awoke, he set to designing the prison that would be named. Neznavka. Upon its completion in 1884, Neznavka would house 999 prisoners in maximum security cells. Borrowing elements of the concept of penopetuk, whatever that word is, Neznavka was a space in which prisoners knew that they were always potentially under surveillance, but in what manner they knew not. It was a space outside of life. Nowhere in that place was there a mirror to see your reflection, to remind you of your own humanity. Nor did the light seem to cast any shadows. We were like ghosts in there. I would finish my shifts and go home, unable to remember what I had done. It did not want to. Rem I did not want to remember. Within the prison, it felt crushing, like a weight of iron pressing upon my body. I often forgot if I was a guard or prisoner. My perception became as spiraling and warped as those wretched corridors. The prison was the same size as the world, or rather, it was the world. Our schedules would shift and change like time itself was being rearranged. The stone walls of that place should have stood for order and pattern, but they became symbols of chaos. It was like being in a dream. All men were lost in that place. Another guard. Albosset himself would refuse to comment on the design and lived alone in self-imposed exile in a small house in Chicago. Albosset died on November 23, 1890, the same night Neznavka burned to the ground in a mysterious fire, killing every prisoner and staff member inside. That doesn't sound like a coincidence. Later analysis of documents relating to the prison would reveal lack of a kitchen among several other notable absent pieces of infrastructure. The site would later be removed from historical records and redeveloped. Arnold Davis. Who the hell is Arnold Davis? Okay, come on now, what is this? No way this is for real. Beth, what? I found the tape in the old Historical Society archives. Do you think they're lying or something? Not lying. It's just some fiction. It's like Atlantis. Plato just made Atlantis up as a bit. And now people think it's like for real lost continent or whatever. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of corroborating evidence that it was real and this was what, a hundred years ago? I think it's worth looking into. Okay, but let's not go too far on this tangent. I don't think this has anything to do with what's going on. Even if these stories are embellished, there's something up here. No way this was such a huge building that was just completely covered up like this. So that's what I'm saying. Fiction with a capital F. Don't do the dots at me because you know I'm right. I'm logging off, Good night. Don't let the evil spooky ghost prison get you. Good night. As far as I know, I don't think we know anybody with the name Arnold Davis or Beth in the series so far, but it does seem like they're trying to investigate maybe what might be causing all the things that's going on right now with the dreams and and clearly Beth thinks that this might have something to do with everything given that the guy that created this prison thought of it through a dream and then it somehow burns down the day he dies. It definitely does seem very weird and coincidental and even Arnold is like this is too crazy for it to be real. I think this is like a new um, plot line though so I don't think this might have any connection with anything so far. The only connection I can make is that they did say that the prison is like a labyrinth obviously connects to the labyrinth that we heard about earlier but uh, we'll see where this goes. Set 9. FBMI Conspiracy. Helix Tech Video Share, Real Conspiracies Episode 4, uploaded by Arnold D. Enigma. It's gotta be the same Arnold D. Yeah. 
Real Conspiracies Episode 4, The Death of Leonard Lang. The Federal Bureau of Metaphysical Intelligence was established in 1946. The stated mission of the FBMI was to protect the American people from paranormal threats. The secondary mission was to learn how to wield those threats for our own benefit, of course. The Pentagram, FBMI headquarters, Richmond, Virginia. So it's not the Pentagon, it's the Pentagram? Directors of the FBMI. William Reich. Jacob Kessel. Martin Webb. Flynn Fincher. Samuel Mann. Leonard Lang. Okay. The FBMI had maintained an interest in the study of dreams since the 60s. In 1975, the FBMI entered a contract with five labs, four researchers who were at the forefront of dream research. Soon after their contract was completed in 1980, the researchers formed a co co corporation to continue their work. Five labs into Somnium Microtechnologies. Makes sense. The FBMI did not respond officially, but sources within Somnium stated that there was no further desire to work for the government. Obviously, we'd rather they were working for us, but they wouldn't listen to reason. Leonard Lang. Without a legal basis to stop Somnium from continuing their research independently, the FBMI surveyed and intimidated them constantly. Somnium founder Dr. Robert Fowler stated in a memo to a colleague that the FBMI was trying to get their hands on their new dream imaging technology at any cost. In November of 1980, a team of three individuals was apprehended by Somnium Research Campus Security while attempting to photograph private documents and place wiretaps. The three were arrested and later found to be hired by the FBMI. Interesting. M. Lloyd, J. Powell, S. Parker, Somnium Burglars. After being arrested, all three burglars developed severe hallucinations and shaped delusions over the following weeks. These delusions reportedly involved a fourth burglar on the team. Both Somnium and the FBMI denied the existence of a fourth burglar. I still have dreams about that lab of running through these corridors alone. Why did we have to go in there? Why did we have to open that door? Sam Parker. The burglar's mental conditions were never able to be tied back to Somnium. That's Cap. <laughs> the whole incident received little media attention and was quickly covered up by both groups. In December of 1980, leaked meeting transcripts revealed that the entire board of directors of the FBMI had begun to complain of constant nightmares. FBMI board of directors. On December 21st, Dr. Robert Fowler was summoned by FBMI Director Leonard Lang to a private meeting at his Richmond home. House of Leonard Lang, Richmond, Virginia. No transcript of this meeting was made, but based on Lang's personal journal, he asked Fowler if he was behind the nightmares and if they could be stopped. Fowler left without providing an answer. The next day, Leonard Lang was found dead in his attic. Dude. Robert Fowler denied attending the meeting. Multiple witnesses confirmed Fowler's alibi and he had not left the Somnium Research Campus in New Farable. <gasps> in New Farable. That's the same place that this apparent prison was made in the past. It was in New Farable, they said. Security footage showed no trace of any intruders entering the home. Investigators quickly ruled the case of a suicide despite leaked autopsy reports indicating a total destruction of the spinal column. Lang was given a closed casket funeral. Oh yeah, suicide my ass. 
funeral of Leonard Lang, Washington, D.C. After the investigation into Lang's death concluded, the FBI backed down from scrutinizing Somnium Microtechnologies. FBI Director Anne Boyle was sworn in January 1981. As Somnium's commercial product, the Dream Viewer is set to be released later this year. The story is still developing. Stay tuned to this video share channel for further episodes. Spread the truth. Okay, so a few things here. It definitely seems like Somnium Microtechnologies was doing anything possible to get the FBMI off their back. They did not want anything to do with them. And to do that, it seems like they did something to them. The FBMI reports that they were constantly getting nightmares and stuff like that after they sent the burglars over. I don't know how Somnium Microtechnologies did it, but they must have somehow done something to them. You know what I mean? To give them these nightmares in hopes that they would just back off. Like they said, Leonard Lang pulled Robert Fowler to his house and was like, yo, did you do this to us? And Robert basically was like, I'm not saying anything. Now they say he wasn't there. He clearly was somehow. I think it's weird that they would, you know, say that there was a meeting and then that he somehow wasn't there. I think he definitely was there somehow, some way. It definitely seems like that Somnium Microtechnologies has a lot more control over their dream powers, for a lack of a better word, or dream experiments than we thought they did. If they just have the power to just give members of the FBMI nightmares, they have a lot of stuff that we don't know about yet. Obviously, Robert Lang was killed somehow. I mean, they said that, you know, his body was in terrible condition and he died in his attic. It clearly wasn't a suicide. Some interesting things though, is that they say that there was a fourth burglar, even though we know nothing about them and everybody denies that there was a fourth burglar. So who knows what happened to that fourth burglar, if they're still around, if they're dead. Uh, the burglars also say that they, what was the quote here? One of the burglars says, I still have dreams about that lab of running through those corridors alone. Why did we have to go in there? Why did we have to open that door? Could this be the same door that Cole was talking about a few videos ago, the black door? Is it the same door or is there some door in the Somnium facility that leads to something even worse? We still don't know yet, at least. And the other big reveal is that the Somnium Microtechnologies headquarters is built upon uh, New Farabolt. And to be more exact, I think it's built right on top of the site of the Nezvaka prison. Nez, Nez, Neznavka, however you pronounce it. I think it's probably built right on top of there. I think whoever was in the five laboratories and a part of Somnium probably knew about the prison and maybe built their facility right on top of it to try to... What's the best way to say this? to try to understand what supernatural things may have happened there. These are my theories so far. Again, I could be wrong, but we got two more videos left. So let's jump into them. Cassette 10, Neurocon. Neurocon, 1982. They got conventions for this stuff too? Neurocon, Academic Conference of Neurology and Neurotech Research. Interesting. So again, this is very early in Somnium Microtechnology days. Neurocon 1982 talks. Up next, Dr. Robert Fowler, non-invasive practical dream integrated. Non-invasive practical dream imaging. Significant activity is observed throughout neural structures during dreams. Visual imagery is generated through the same mechanisms that form images in waking perception. Our research has mapped these pathways through various techniques, including waking perception comparison, neural impulse backscatter mapping, and Lopez-Wagner optical inventory. These breakthroughs are undoubtedly quite significant and form the backbone of our dream imaging technique, but this is barely scratching the surface of what we hope to achieve. Our currently available technology, EEG monitoring, magnetic resonance imaging, is too slow and imprecise to accurately measure the neural signals that we need to access. Our medical technology research team, Mrs. Ingram and her husband, are making tremendous strides in neural imaging that let us view with great accuracy and non-invasively not only cerebral blood flow, but neural voltage across many areas of the brain. 
This technology is behind the newest iteration of our scanning hardware. Merely viewing dreams is all well and good. What we're trying to achieve is real, actual understanding of where dreams come from. That is our next step. The unconscious leads through dreams to perception, which leads to the conscious. We plan to follow this river upstream, into dreams, into memories, into whatever mysteries await us there. Our studies into this field have been primarily concerned with dream synchronicity, by having several test subjects begin dreaming together, and not just monitoring their brain waves, but amplifying waves that are found within multiple subjects and propagating them through the other subjects, we have been able to produce astonishing results. Building off of these tests, we've shown that amplifying certain neural wave vectors allows for on-demand rec- Wait. A large dog stepped out of the forest and placed a knife at my feet. The wolf had been following me, cornered me, and dropped a dagger from its jaws. The black dog stopped and coughed up what looks like a ceremonial dagger. The wolf creature opened its mouth and spat out a knife, which clattered to the floor. So they had four different subjects all dream about a similar thing. Interesting. So they can link them together in ways. That amplifying certain neural wave vectors allows for on-demand recreation of specific dreams. We aren't yet sure of the true potentials for this discovery, but every day Edge maze, ice caves, than ever before. Huh. Dark city. As we continue upstream, where this river will take us, we do not know. But the current we are pushing against is one that we humans have pushed against for our entire existence. I know some detractors of our work have said that this pursuit is misguided, and there are some things that man was not meant to know. But is it not in the nature of man to follow his dreams? Interesting. So then does that mean that the Somnium Dream Viewer was actually manipulating people's dreams to begin with? Not just recording them, but actually creating them. Because they said that there's certain brainwave pattern amplification that they can use to create certain dreams. And we see some of those certain dreams here, which we had learned that Cole dreams of the ice caves. We also know that the hedge maze is similar to the labyrinth. Uh, Cole also dreamt of a dark city. Like we've heard of a few of these dreams before and he was dreaming of them when he had the dream viewer on and we know that because we saw images of them. So it does definitely seem like the dream viewer was just some giant experiment that Somnium was doing from the jump. And that was to find what is truly this question mark, what they're pushing against, what is above the subconscious mind. Now we're going to enter the last video that is currently out called Carol. Now, if you remember, Carol is the old woman who said that she kept seeing her husband at the door, asking her to open it, even though he was dead a year prior. And then we saw that video where he ends up breaking in anyway. So who knows what we're about to see in this video. Cassette 11, Carol. All right, Carol, what you got for me? Got some towers with lights on top. Shascom, Shasta Area Safety Communications Agency. Transcript of 911 call for service, October 27th, 1985, 11.43 p.m. Here we go, baby. Give me that transcript. Nine one one, what is the address of your emergency? One forty three Ridgewood Drive. I need uh, police officers. My husband is trying to break into my house. And what is your name? C Carol Davis. All right, Carol, I'm dispatching officers to you right now. If you could please stay on the line for me. Is anyone else in the house with you? No. 
Does your husband have a weapon? I don't know. He's been banging on the door with something. He usually doesn't bang on the door. Usually he just screams and calls my name. Your husband is at the door often? I've been seeing him more often. Usually I just have dreams about him, but now he's been coming around the house too. Dreams? Yes, since he passed, I sometimes have dreams about him. Passed as in passed away? Yes, nearly two years ago. They're gonna think she's crazy. And you're afraid of him coming back? Yes. You're afraid of him getting in the house. Hold on. Jesus Christ. Decrypting. Logged in as A Davis. Play call playback. Hey. Hey. So, how's she doing? Do you need me to drive down there? I I can take some time off work. No, I think it'll be okay. She's doing fine. She's freaked out, but I got to talk to her, and she seemed okay last I got to see her. The hospital said that they're going to take her down to San Jose. They think her hallucinations are part of that WDH thing that's been going around. Oh, jeez. I mean, you know, she's been talking about seeing Ray around ever since he died, and it's been, what, two years now? Isn't that not just, I, I don't know, dementia at that point? I, the officer told me that they needed to quarantine her, and if she doesn't display any symptoms after two weeks, they'll release her and she can come back. And it's all, you know, paid for, so it, it'll at least give her some time away so I can clean up the house and get the door replaced. Yeah, okay, so what, what happened with the door exactly? Someone tried to break in through the front door, and a neighbor across the street heard the window break and called the cops? Yeah, that's, that's what they told me. And then she told the police that it was Ray trying to break again, and I had to tell the officer that he was dead, and then as soon as she started telling the police that she'd been seeing him and having dreams about him, they got real weird about everything and started talking about sending her to the quarantine center. Look, I'm just going to say it. I don't buy this whole quarantine thing. Have you ever heard of anyone coming out of one of those things? So are the police in on it then, if they started acting weird when they heard about that? I feel like usually the police would be like, oh, so she's crazy or she does have dementia or something, you know what I mean? And they would write it off. But the fact that they acted weird and was like, all right, we're putting her in quarantine definitely is odd. They're being real quiet about what goes on in there. If you think I believe for a second those smiling faces in those commercials. Okay, what is it, Arnie? A government conspiracy again? Can you cool it for five minutes? Okay, our aunt is in need. And I'm the one helping her, okay? Listen, I don't want to guilt trip you or whatever, but I'm the one down here in California looking at Oh, okay, so I'm not, I'm not allowed to live my own life now? Is that what it is? That's not, that's not... Don't give me this Mother Teresa BS. Okay, look, I don't deny there's something off about it, okay? Apparently, when it happened, she had a camcorder, and the police confiscated it. When I asked them about it, they just straight up denied it to my face. I saw that she was holding it when I got there last night, and then I guess while I was talking to the cops, one of them took it, and then they just straight up lied to my face when I asked about it later. Yeah, typical cops, huh? I mean, yeah, but why would they lie about that? I mean, what's on that tape? She also said that she called 911, but they said there wasn't a call made from the house. The only call was from Frank across the street when he heard the screaming. Look, I, I want to come down there. I can help you. If you come down here, you look, you, you promise me that you'll keep your head on straight, all right? If you want to help me figure this out, I can't have you going on about whatever crop circle psychic driving conspiracy. Okay, okay, I'll be completely uh, cool. Thank you. Completely cool that our aunt has been taken to a government black site after being attacked by a ghost. Yeah, if you could just be cool about that. That would be awesome. Very well. Okay, well, if you want to come down, just let me know when you'll be here. I'll be at her house. It looks like she had a surveillance system set up, but the tapes for that are missing, too. <sighs> Probably also the cops. God damn it. I, yeah, maybe. Okay, I'll, I'll let you know what I figure out. Uh, okay, uh, stay safe. Bye. Bye. Call ended. And that's it so interesting so arnold who we've been kind of following for the last couple of videos 
His aunt is Carol. I actually didn't even realize they must have the same last name, possibly. Let me go back and look. Yeah, so Carol is actually Carol D in the previous video. So Carol Davis. So that makes sense that they're related. So this makes a lot more sense because over the phone, when Carol's speaking to the police, they're like, oh, you're, you were dreaming of him? Like, and now you see him? Like the, the police immediately caught on. They know what's going on. They have to know something about these dreams and these dreams coming to life. Because then when they show up, they say that Carol never made a police call, which she did. They say that there was no recording from a personal handheld camera, which she did. They say that there were no surveillance tapes, which they took because there were. And now they have her and she's quarantined. Clearly a lot of sketchy things going on. And it seems like Arnold is coming down now and maybe Arnold will get to the bottom of what's going on with everything. I definitely hope we see more of those surveillance tapes and maybe more of what actually happened to Carol. Cause I'm very interested. Okay, so my thoughts on Somnium Dream Viewer. Wow, this series is incredible. There are so many plot threads going on right now, it's crazy. So far, we know that Five Labs, which was the beginning of Somnium Microtechnologies, had a fifth member or a fifth researcher, and they were kind of written off from history. We still don't know who that is. The FBMI at one point sent people to try to investigate and find out what Somnium was really doing, and all four of them were caught, but we only know three of them. They try to act like that there wasn't a fourth burglar, even though it seems like there was. So we still don't know who the fourth burglar is or what happened to them. We also don't know what happened to Cole. We know that Cole went through this dark door and has been missing ever since. Will we ever find out what happened to him? He might just be dead if he was sent off to the labyrinth, which we still need to find out what's going on with the labyrinth and all that. We still have very minimal information on it. And then on top of all that, we have Arnold Davis, who is about to go down to find out what happened to his aunt Carol, and maybe he'll get some more evidence or find out some more information that we need to know. I do think that's where the plot's gonna go next. I mean, that is where we ended off here. Arnold is super deep into what's going on with Somnia Microtechnologies and the FBMI. He knows stuff. So maybe he'll try to connect it with what's going on with his aunt. But this series is really, really good. This series started in the beginning of January of 2022 and it's still going on now. The last video was uploaded two months ago, I believe. So guys, please, 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 I say this in every video, but it is super important. Go support the original creators of these series. I know I make videos on them and you guys watch them with me, but please go back and watch these videos on your own. You might find something I missed. And please go check out the original channel, Somnium Dream Viewer. The link will be at the top of the description down below. Please, please, please go and support your analog horror content creators. This series deserves a ton more love. Please go support this one, guys. And be sure to let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. I personally have a really big interest in dreams and all that, so I'd love to see that be the center of an analog horror series here. It's just so interesting and so cool to see all these things connect. But I definitely hope we see more of this series soon. Also guys, the time to buy our exclusive plushie got extended for a week. So now you guys have till Friday at 12 Eastern time to go and get these guys. Please go and check them out. The link will be in the description as well down below. They're only available for a limited time. And once the time is up, these guys are not being sold anymore. So go get them all you can. They could protect you from all the analog horror monsters and stuff that you see in all these videos. So you don't have to worry about getting eaten by a mimic at night. And these guys will even stop nightmares if you use the Somnium Dream Viewer. <laughs> But seriously, if you guys want to support me, this is the number one way. Please go get these guys. Link in the description down below. But all right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like on it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We do videos like this all the time here. And we're trying to hit 300k before the end of the year. All right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.